Today we will tell the story of Balaam and his donkey, which is found in the book of Numbers chapter 22. May the word of God reach our hearts as a source of inspiration for our lives. In the shadowy and serene valley of Moab, the calm waters of the Jordan River reflected the first rays of the morning sun, painting the landscape with golden hues. Along the riverbanks, facing the majestic Jericho, stretched the camp of the Israelites. An impressive view of tents unfolded through the valley, like a sea of fabric gently rippling in the morning breeze. The king of Moab, Balak, watched this spectacle with a mix of fear and admiration. His heart pounded as he observed the vastness of the foreign crowd that had invaded his domains. The legends of the Israelites' deeds echoed in his thoughts, filling him with anguish and apprehension. With uncertainty clouding his mind and fear of defeat, Balak gathered with the leaders of the Midianites to forge a defense strategy against this mighty people. It was then, amidst whispered conversations and worried glances, that the idea arose to enlist the services of Balaam, the renowned prophet of the East. This man, whose name was known throughout the region, dwelled along the banks of the majestic Euphrates River in distant and mysterious lands. Upon hearing news of the Israelites' arrival, Balak and the Midianites decided to send messengers to Balaam, bearing precious gifts and an urgent message. O Balaam, prophet of the lands of the east, come to us swiftly, the message implored. A vast horde of exiles has come out of Egypt and now resides in our valley. They are mightier than us, and we fear they will subjugate us. We beseech you with your wisdom and prophetic power to curse them so that we may triumph over them. We know you are a man of great influence, and whoever you curse will be cursed, and whoever you bless will be blessed. At nightfall, Balaam invited the messengers to stay in his tent, promising them a response at the break of dawn. As silence enveloped the night, a divine voice whispered in the depths of the prophet's soul, inquiring about the identity of the visitors who sought him. Who are these men with you? echoed the celestial voice. They have come in the name of the king of Moab. He claims that a great multitude has come out of Egypt and wishes for me to go to them to pronounce a curse. Balaam responded, aware of the sacred presence permeating his words. No, do not go with them and do not curse this people, for they are blessed by me, ordered the Lord in his subtle yet powerful voice. At daybreak, Balaam gathered the king's messengers and conveyed to them the divine will. Return to your sovereign and inform him that the Lord does not permit me to accompany you, proclaimed the prophet, firm in his decision. The messengers, disappointed, returned to King Balak, conveying to him Balaam's words. Faced with the prophet's refusal, the monarch then sent a delegation of more influential men bearing tempting promises. Through them, the voice of the king resounded. Let nothing hinder you from coming to me. If you curse this people, I will make you exceedingly rich beyond all imagination. Balaam, becoming a crossroads between the king's will and the divine voice, faced an agonizing dilemma. Although he knew he could not be bribed to prophesy against the Lord's will, he decided to grant the messengers one last chance to hear the heavenly voice. Even if the king were to fill my house with gold, I can only say what the Lord commands me. However, stay here tonight. I will see if the Lord reveals anything different to me, declared the prophet with deliberation. As darkness enveloped the land and the firmament filled with stars, the voice of God echoed once again in Balaam's mind. Since these men have come back to you, you may go with them. However, be cautious. Speak only what I command you, instructed the Lord, revealing his decree to the confident prophet. Thus, at the break of the next day, Balaam prepared to embark on his journey toward Moab. Upon the back of his humble donkey, accompanied by his two faithful servants, he began the journey filled with uncertainties and divine promises. While traversing the dusty paths of the region, an unexpected scene interrupted his march. The angel of the Lord in all his majesty and glory blocked the path ahead, wielding a flaming sword in his hands. Sensing the celestial presence, 
The donkey veered off the path, entering a nearby field. Enraged, Balaam punished her with blows until she resumed the designated path. However, the angel of the Lord continued positioning himself in front of a narrow pass with rocky walls on both sides. The donkey once again caught sight of the celestial figure with its unsheathed sword and fearful, pressed herself against the rock, trapping Balaam's foot. Faced with this obstacle, the prophet could not contain his anger, once again punishing his faithful companion. The angel of the Lord continued on his celestial mission, but this time chose a narrow place where there was no room for deviation. Confronted with this new barrier, the donkey, fearing the imposing presence, threw herself to the ground, seeking shelter under Balaam's body. Flooded with uncontrollable anger, Balaam wielded a staff and struck furious blows against his faithful companion. However, in an extraordinary moment of divine intervention, God granted the donkey a voice. With surprising clarity, she addressed her master, asking, Why have you struck me these three times? Perplexed by the unexpected conversation, Balaam erupted in shouts of fury, rebuking the donkey for her behavior. You have made a fool of me. If I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you now, he exclaimed in despair. However, the donkey, in her animal wisdom, argued gently, Have I not been your donkey for many years? Have I ever behaved like this before? Confronted with the irrefutable logic of his loyal companion, Balaam, astonished, acknowledged the truth of her words, admitting that she had never before shown such behavior. Suddenly, Balaam's eyes were flooded with a dazzling light, and he beheld the imposing figure of the angel of the Lord, positioned on the path before him, with his unsheathed sword gleaming in the sunlight. Stunned by the celestial grandeur, Balaam prostrated himself in humble reverence before the Divine Presence. The angel, with a voice resonating power and authority, addressed Balaam. You have struck your donkey three times, but if she had not turned aside from me, I would have killed you and spared her life. Faced with the words of the celestial messenger, Balaam felt a shiver run down his spine, understanding the gravity of his situation. With a trembling voice, Balaam replied, if you do not want me to go to Moab, I will return immediately to my home. Then the angel of the Lord responded calmly, No, you may continue on your way, but be cautious. Only speak the words that I command you. Thus, with a mixture of fear and determination, Balaam proceeded toward Moab. Aware of the weight of the words he would utter and the divine presence that accompanied him on his journey, This is the seventh part of a series of nine, where we will tell the biblical story of the search for the promised land. Stay with us so you don't miss the next chapters of this important story for all of us. If you're not subscribed to our channel yet, click on the subscription button and join our community. Don't forget to comment, like, and click on the notification bell. Your presence and participation here are very important to us. And if you missed the previous episodes, we have a complete playlist with all the videos in chronological order. Today I want to leave you with a verse found in the book of Numbers, chapter 22, verse 18. But Balaam answered Balak's servants, Even if Balak gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, I could not disobey the command of the Lord my God to do anything great or small. May the presence of God be a constant in your life, bringing blessings, joy, and love. God bless you.